medium level boil and I'm quitting alcohol. So it's coming up on two weeks since I did my fucking rib injury and that's about how long it takes to completely fall apart. I've done no exercise, I've done nothing, I've been eating like shit and it's a fucking problem now. And not only that, I woke up this morning and my ribs just as sore as it was two weeks ago. I want to go down to the gym today, but I just don't know what the fuck I'm going to do there. I have to do something. I'll fucking do this podcast and then I'll go down. I'll sweat a little bit. I need to do something. You have no idea how quickly I can fucking fall off. Yesterday, I was just like, fuck it. I'm eating whatever the fuck I want today because Monday's the big day. I'm going to go back into the gym. Woke up this morning, obviously, and fucking really sore. But I fucking woke up. Well, I didn't even sleep yesterday, so I'm just fucking fried yesterday. Got back from watching the fight, stopped in at McDonald's, got a sausage and egg Big Muffin meal with a side Big Mac. That was the start of the day. That was like 7.30 a.m. And then I just kept the fucking foot <laughs> on the accelerator all day. Just didn't leave the fridge. Cashew nuts, almonds. Punnets and punnets of fucking blueberries. Then I fucking ramped it up. I went some Doritos. Then I went a couple of fucking packets of like Migarang noodles. Then I ate about a kilo of fucking yogurt. It was wild. That yogurt, I usually have three spoonfuls a day. I nailed <laughs> basically a week's worth in one sitting. I couldn't stop. I just put it in a bowl dumped some blueberries on it, like a whole punnet, smashed it, and then went back for the exact same thing, like twice more. This doesn't even sound that bad. This would be a healthy day for me, like three, four years ago. Five, let's say five years ago, this is a pretty healthy day. This is me cutting things back. Back in the crane days, Jesus Christ, I would be fucking stopping in at 7-Eleven to get a fucking coffee with sugar in it, and two banana breads. That's before I stop at McDonald's. So that's just snacking on the way to McDonald's at 5 a.m. on the way to work. Darting in between as well. Fucking smashing down some darts. Window open. That was just tying me over to McDonald's. Then I'd get McDonald's, another coffee, dart, dart, dart. And that would tie me over until fucking smoker a couple of hours later, and then it's just constant stopping and eating all day, and darting, and chocolate bars, and fucking ice cream, fuck, I can't believe I even made it through that period, so in fucking retrospect, so relatively, me going nuts now is not even like a normal day for what I was doing back then, but the result is very similar. So when you fucking tune your rig to a good level and you take the fucking eye off the fucking prize, you get fat real fucking quick. So in 11 days, I've managed to slide back to what I was, let's say, four months ago. So in 11 days, I reversed four months of work. But the thing is, I feel like I can reverse these 11 days in about two weeks. Two weeks I can pull it back, but the problem is I'm fucking injured and I'm fucking not going to be able to pull it back. It feels like for at least another week, but I can't wait that long though. <laughs> it's fucked. Don't get injured. It's made me like reassess this jujitsu thing as well. Everything's good until you get injured. If it was a different injury, if I fucking... Even if you hurt your ankle or something, you can still do fucking upper body workouts and shit like that. You can do the rowing machine or your knee. You can fucking, you can still do stuff. This rib thing, it just feels uncomfortable everywhere. Anyway, who gives a fuck about my rib? I can't be fucked talking about it anymore. Let's just get on with fucking today's ass boil because it's ass boil time. So if you have a question for one of the greatest minds of the generation or any generation, any generation that's ever been, 
then head to my website, boilcomedy.com. There's a section there for Ask Boyle. Put your details in. Fill out your fucking thing or ask your question and I'll get to it while you're there. Join the Patreon. It's a pint a month. I put the money to good use. Don't worry about that. And the last thing is Canadian listeners, all the Canadians out there, Vancouver, Toronto, tickets on sale now. Just go to my website. It's under tours. You'll see it. Vancouver, 6th of December and Toronto, 8th of December. I'll see you there. Get some tickets. Anyway, let's get to this week's Ask Boil. So this week's Ask Boil was sent in by my man Jason out there in the USA. And here's Jason's question. Do you find or think that for some, they become addicted to sobriety? I don't think that's a bad thing, but as I have experienced with some of friends in AA, they seem to replace one addiction with another, much like your newsletter discussed. AA becomes their addiction. Well, Jace, you have come to the right place. I think I've talked about that before. It happens when you uh, quit drinking. So the first time I quit drinking, one of the justifications I used to restart drinking was, I'm addicted to being sober now. What's the difference? I have no control over alcohol. Not drinking ever is the same as drinking all the time. You know what I mean? Like moderation is having control over of your addiction, if I can just have like a few drinks and then stop, that's control. Not drinking ever, that means you've got no control at all because you can't have like a couple of drinks and stop. And now that I've had like 14 months off the drink, I obviously have control now. I've proven to myself I have control. And then what happens is you start drinking and you have control for about a week and then you just go back to exactly where you were plus (laughs) an extra fucking 14 months of the shit you've just fucking suppressed. So all that comes out as well and you end up in a worse place than you originally started. But yeah, that's a fucking difficult one because you do feel like you have the same lack of control when you're abstaining completely. I'm not too sure about the AA thing because I've never gone to it, but I've heard it's pretty culty and you have to fully fucking buy into it. But the thing is, for certain people, that's maybe just what they need. They've got such a fucking addictive personality that they need to replace the addiction with AA addiction. And if that's what gets them through, then fucking whatever. If you need AA, if you need religion, if you just use whatever the fuck that's necessary, whatever the fuck will get you there. I didn't really need AA, but I am feeling like recently (laughs) that I may be more fucked up than I'd ever given myself full credit for. What seems to be happening is the more you sort of like work on things that need fixing in your life and clear that shit out, the more the shit underneath the surface starts bubbling up. And then you're like, oh, wow. Now this weird thing that I've been burying for the last fucking 30 years is bubbling up. I'll take care of that. And then you take care of that. And then you're like, oof, (laughs) there's some more shit. All right. Oof. I don't know if I'm ready to take care of that shit. And from what I can gather, that just keeps happening continually. It sort of gets harder and harder to fix <laughs> to fix yourself by yourself after a certain point. So I'm half thinking of a therapist, but I'm not really. I'll see how I go after the ayahuasca retreat. I was thinking of doing mushrooms in the not too distant future but i've got that ayahuasca retreat coming up and hopefully that can clear out some shit but why i bring that up is it's hard it's very difficult to do things all by yourself so 
going out there, asking for help, all that sort of stuff. I used to be more against it, but I think that was just me being a stubborn fucking cunt. I think people should just fucking try anything and everything they can until something fucking works, until you stumble across anything. And if that thing happens to be fucking AA, or you have to become psychotically fucking addicted to your sobriety in some way, then fucking if it works, it works. Who cares? You'll annoy heaps of cunts, though. You will fucking really annoy cunts, but fucking do it. There's no real answers. <laughs> that's, the, that's the other thing I fucking I've figured out over the last four years of fucking just internal, deep internal fucking analysis. There's no real answers. It's all a big fucking process. A process of discovery. Continuous, arduous, traumatic discovery. I don't even think I answered the question. I more told you what I've been thinking about lately, which is this podcast. Anyway, I hope you, <laughs> I hope you fucking uh, got something out of it. Anyway, I hope I answered some of your question. But yeah, that'll do for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around, and I'll see you the fuck later. <laughs>